my name is Claire Ovi. I'm the head of the department for the execution of the judgments of the European Court of Human Rights, which is part of the Council of Europe in Strasbourg. We're, there's no state which doesn't execute judgments. There absolutely isn't. So we have certain states which get um, where we have many, many more violation judgments from the court. Um, uh, and um, but for those states, most of the judgments are still executed, at least by the payment of just satisfaction awarded by the court, um, and usually by the by taking other measures as well. So uh, I wouldn't say you can generalise and say there's any one state that doesn't execute the court's judgments. There are undoubtedly some judgments of the court which are very difficult for the state to execute, either because they're expensive, you know, like you, you do need, and politically, maybe politically unpopular within the country. I mean, typically to do with um, conditions in prisoners or anything to do with kind of convicted people or prisoners, because it's a hard sell, you know, to go to your electorate and say, you know, we need to spend the Council of Europe, this foreign body tells us that we need to spend millions on improving our prisons, you know, when there might be schools that need improving or hospitals that need improving. So. Uh, that can be complex. We have other judgments which uh, really require deep changes or well, changes in deeply rooted cultural attitudes. So we have a lot of cases about discrimination against Roma, for example, or um, uh, about um, LGBTI rights, um, hate crime. So these um, uh, kind of very deeply rooted prejudices in certain countries can take decades really to to be overturned and a lot a lot of work. So sometimes the actual nature of the case, you know, is completely normal that it will take a long time uh, to to complete execution. Um, other cases are sensitive because they are just very political. So n by its nature, also an interstate case or a state we have also um, individual cases which aren't interstate cases but relate to conflicts or frozen conflicts. So where you've had a, a kind of an armed conflict between two member states of the Council of Europe, there are also obviously a lot of very difficult emotions to do with that. It's very, again, it's a very difficult thing to say to your population when you've just been involved in a war with this country that you're now going to give money to citizens of that country or whatever. So that can be difficult. And then we also just have cases which are uh, unfortunate, we, which relate to political opponents in some countries um, where the court has found that there have been um, politically motivated criminal proceedings, for example, um, where there's just a real a lack of political will and a political resistance to, to doing anything about it. Um, so those are, those are the main difficult kind of cases that we have to deal with. Um, and in terms of what the, it's not really what the Department of Execution can do, but what the Committee of Ministers can do. So the Committee of Ministers is, um, you know, made up of representatives of all of the governments of the council, member states of the Council of Europe. Uh, they have a collective responsibility to uphold the convention and they take it very seriously. Um, and uh, as I say, there's not, you know, we, there's, they have limited tools because we can't, you know, you can't send an army into a country and tell them to let someone out of prison. So um, the the main tool is really talking, just trying to persuade people. Uh, so talking in the committee of ministers, talking bilaterally in terms of diplomatic contacts. Um, uh, also just kind of adopting decisions which are publicly known and which can kind of uh, um, affect the reputation of the member state because all states like to be seen as re respecting human rights. Um, and uh, the ultimate sanction really is to um, suspend a, a, a state's membership of the organisation, but that um, has never really been used and hopefully will not be necessary to be used. Um, so you have to go through quite a lot of steps before you would get to that sort of stage. At the moment, we do have a case. Um, we, the, the sort of the stepping stone uh, to that, but it's not necessarily um, would not necessarily follow, is uh, what we call infringement proceedings, where you can send where the committee of ministers thinks that there's a real refusal by a state to execute a judgment. 
the committee can refer that case back to the European Court for the court to rule on the question whether there has been a refusal. Um, the committee has used that so far only once in a case of uh, someone who was um, detained in Azerbaijan on the basis of criminal proceedings that the European Court said were um, a misuse of power and were politically motivated. Um, and so the committee sent that case back to the court. Uh, after the committee sent it back to the court, the man was released from detention. And after the court, court ruled that there had been a refusal to execute the judgment, he was actually acquitted, completely acquitted. So we've used it once and it has worked once, but that's I'm not saying that it would work again. Okay. Yeah. So what we really need um, actually is more is not really changes in our department but changes in the respondent states because uh, quite a lot of states quite quite well all states they have uh, a kind of contact person who's the person within their government quite often within the Ministry of Justice sometimes within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs sometimes uh, you know somewhere else in the government administration but um, they, there's a contact person who sends us information, sends us, you know, so we, we get a judgment from the court and then the respondent state has to first come up with an action plan saying this is how we understand the judgment, this is the measures we think we need to take, this is what we've already done, this is what we're going to do. So the contact person has to send us that, then they have to keep us updated on what has been done. Um, then also very very importantly they have to coordinate through the government so you know quite often if you have something like um, prison conditions you need the judges for example to be changing the way in which they sentence people particularly in the way in which they order pre-trial detention so that you reduce the number of people being sent to a prison then you might need um, the Ministry of Justice or whoever it is in the country who's going to build new prisons or repair the existing prisons you might need um, the parliament to pass legislation to say that when someone is uh, detained in, in bad conditions that they, can, um, uh, that they can get compensation at national level. So you might need lots of different state actors to be doing different things and you might want to um, talk to civil society and find out what their views on it are. So we need the national coordinator to be, um, you know, sufficiently staffed, sufficiently resourced and also sufficiently um, kind of authoritative within uh, the state administration to manage to do all of those things and to manage to send us the information. And unfortunately um, in a lot of states the national coordinator is under resourced, they don't have enough staff, they are quite often the same person who's actually litigating in the European court and so um, you know, quite naturally, they'll put a lot of their resources into stopping, trying to stop new violations, you know, and also the court has much more, much stricter deadlines, so they have to get their pleadings in or they have to appear at the hearing in the court. And so a lot of their energy and time and resources go uh, on that. And so they don't have as much, um, you know, just time to work on execution, to give it, to make sure that we get the information and to make sure that things happen at a national level. And um, so that's really is our main problem, I think. Uh, there's limit, you know, the European Court is changes, frequently changes its working methods. We can look a little bit at how we use, for example, the Committee of Ministers time, how we use the human rights meetings. But um, we can't really use sort of you know the European Court has kind of economies of sex scale where it will do huge group communications or huge group findings of violations we because uh, we are looking at each individual case we have to look at the individual measures we can obviously group cases where it's for general measures but we have to make sure that each individual person gets their just satisfaction gets let out of prison or you know or gets their retrial or whatever the individual measure is so there's a limit to what we can do in terms of um, ration, you know rationalizing our work or and kind of dealing with cases together um, and what we really need actually is more action on state level and and uh, better resourced government agents offices yeah mm -hmm.